What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Full Throttle and my name is Charlie. Today I'm gonna to be replacing the ball joints on this 350Z. So, like I said in yesterday's video, or well, it's gonna all come out today. Like I said, um, somebody you know tried to fraud me by saying that, um, that uh, this car has been in a lot of accidents, like, <laughs> oh my God, like eight accidents. It went through like 10 owners. He used a fake Carfax. If you guys want to see the full story on that, I, um, I'm going to post that video too, so just check out the channel. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is replacing the ball joints on this car. I actually already replaced them, but the intro that I recorded, I actually used for um, another video. So I'm going to get to the install now and show you guys how to replace the ball joints on a 350Z. The only thing that's really wrong with this car is the front lower ball joints. And I've never really done the front lower ball joints. All I usually do is replace the whole knuckle because the knuckle usually has it on there because I didn't have a press for a long time. Well, I bought a press, if you guys remember seeing in the video that I did with these knuckles, and I actually replaced one. So I, I didn't know how I was going to press it in, but actually, where is the one I used? This has like a little bit of a cone shape to it. So what I did is I just pressed it on here and then and then uh, used this, you know, and then put this one on the bottom like this when the, when the retaining clip wasn't on there. And I actually pressed it in and I was like, you know what, that was so easy. Like, I've had this ball joint forever and I can't believe that it was that easy to put it on. So what I'm gonna do is I just called O'Reilly. AutoZone wanted like, 80 dollars plus tax like for a ball joint and i was like i'm not gonna pay that much for a ball joint so i called around and i was like hey you know like explaining it to them they gave me a part number i double checked it online and it's a correct fit and it's only 40 bucks so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna show you guys today how to replace a front lower ball joint All right, so I got the ball joint. All I gotta do is move this car, because I do wanna put this car up on the lift. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it down. I'm gonna put it on some vehicle dollies. All right, so I don't know if I should have pressed that ball joint in already because it looks like this is gonna be pretty simple. So basically all I have to do is take off these lower control arms, or well at least, you know, because all I have to do is loosen this bolt and then, you know, lift the, lift the control arm up a little bit, but I'm gonna have to take out this, I'm gonna have to take off the end link uh, bolts and or nuts, and then I'm gonna have to push out the end links, take out the bolt for the strut, and do that for both sides. And then what I can do is after I have the wheels off, I'll have plenty of room to get to this ball joint and I can probably just push it out and then push it back in and I won't even have to worry about alignment really because all of this stuff, like there's no alignment like washers here for alignment. All the alignment is based off of is just these here, so the tie rod ends. So I'm thinking that I might not even have to redo alignment if I can get these lower control arms just popped up, push these new, uh, push these old ball joints out and then push the new ones in. So I'm gonna give this a try and then I'll let you guys know like after I get back in the car if the steering wheel is off at all or if I need to get an alignment or if the steering wheel pulls. But I'm really hoping that I don't even have to do that. So I'm gonna get to it now. All right, so these, uh, these end links and this uh, strut right here is a 17 millimeter. And then this um, lower control arm bolt that goes through the subframe is a 19 millimeter. All right, so when I pressed the, uh, when I started pressing the ball joint into that side over there, I actually um, realized that the knuckle that I pressed the other ball joint into was actually that side. So before I had it pressed all the way in, I just decided to pop that side out and uh, take this side apart and put it in this side. So what I did, is I took out this uh, this bolt for this compression arm, or I didn't take out the bolt, I took off the nut on the bottom right here with the cotter pin, because I don't want to put too much pressure on this, this compression arm because I don't want this uh, to rip. 
So you can see over here how this one had ripped from uh, the pressure being put on this side. So what I did is I took out that bolt on the bottom. That way this doesn't have as much pressure on it. That way when I drop this control arm, it doesn't put as much pressure onto the, uh, the compression arm and possibly rip this pushing. All right, so after you drop all these bolts, this is 19, 17, 17, and this is a 22. Take the cotter pin out. Now you can get to this 22, and then we can start pushing this ball joint out. After you're done dropping the lower control arm, use a pair of snap ring pliers. Take off this retaining clip or snap ring. Ooh. Maybe you should wear eye protection. After you take off that snap ring, what you're going to do is you're going to find the right size coupling in the ball joint press kit that you can rent at AutoZone or O'Reilly or many auto parts stores. This is the one I'm using. It's got a front open face and all you do is you place it around the ball joint like this. Make sure that the, the threaded portion of the ball joint is lined up with the hole on the top here. Position your ball joint press or your C-clamp so that the hole lines up. Use an impact gun and press it out. Now you've got the old ball joint. I'll show you guys a trick right here. And sometimes the supplied cone that comes with these ball joints is not the right size. So, uh, I mean, it, it happens every once in a while with, uh, with different parts, but what I'll do is I'll take, you know, a, um, uh, a puller like this, and you can just press back the boot on these blown ball joints so you see this ball joint is, is clearly bad and you can actually press back the boot over this lip and then what you do is you take this little puller and you actually put it on this little cone tighten it down in the center of the threaded portion and you can actually pull this off so I should have done this uh, while this was still on the knuckle it makes it a little bit easier And then what you do is you just, oh. <laughs> bam. And uh, there's the old, you know, busted ball joint and you have your cone that's uh, still good. So um, you can use this to put on your new existing ball joint. Sometimes the ball joints won't even come with these. All right, so after you find the appropriate size um, coupling for your ball joint, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this out real quick and then I'm going to press this new ball joint in here. After the area is all prepped and clean, you can get ready to push in the new ball joint. So I've got the, um, the press fitting around the ball joint on the hat part portion only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the ball joint, it should go about halfway in, and then stay about there. And what I'm gonna do, is use this cap. So what this does is it allows the bottom of the ball joint to pass the bottom of the knuckle. So this ball joint sticks out just a tiny bit just so you can fit that snap ring on. So after you get that snap ring on, you're, you're pretty much good, but you want this to seat flush against the bottom of the knuckle. So in order to do that, you have to use this little cap. What you can do is figure out how much space you need. So. I'm actually about good right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line this up and make sure that the ball joint isn't going to interfere with the, uh, with the bottom here, the bottom portion. And all I have to do now is make sure that it's lined up straight. So as long as it's lined up straight, you're pretty much good. But with this setup directly on the bottom of this, on the bottom, you know, the top hat of this ball joint, all I have to do is use a 22 millimeter and torque this, and it should push the ball joint right into place. There we go. Now 
Now your new ball joint is seated flush and you've got enough space to fit your snap ring. And now all you have to do is fit that snap ring back on, put your cone back on, and uh, this ball joint is good to go. So what I did is I cleaned up and reused the OEM cones. And what I'm gonna do is just put those on there and uh, should uh, fit perfectly in my uh, OEM lower control arms. Reinsert your snap ring. Reinstall your lower control arm. Most of these range in between 70 to 94 foot pounds. So all of these for the end link, for the subframe, for the uh, for the shock mount, uh, and also for the ball joint. So I just torque this down to 80 foot pounds. I'm gonna go to 80 foot pounds for all of these, and then you just reinstall this and uh, you're pretty much done. Your ball joint's in. Do not forget to reinstall your cotter pins. So now I got the whole uh, lower control arm back up. I got all the cotter pins in, everything's torqued down. All right guys, so it's day number two and uh, I already got one side back together so I showed you guys last night. So this is what it's looking like. The new ball joint's in, this side is good. And all I have to do is um, get this other side on. And I was just gonna replace this whole knuckle over here but instead of replacing the whole knuckle, what I'm gonna do, because I already have this pressed in, to this knuckle here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually remove this ball joint and I'm gonna show you guys how I put this one on. So basically, with the other one, all I had to do, I think it was this one here. Yeah. With this one, with the other one, all I had to do was fit this over the boot and then I could press it straight in. Well, the problem with, uh, with this side is that this boot, the lip, which is common with these, is very very small and the boot on this comes out really far and i can't just remove this boot or pull it up just so i can you know put a uh, fitting on here so what i'm going to do is i actually took this bolt right here this nut and i flipped it upside down and made it level and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on top of here like this center it on top of the the knuckle that's on the car and then i'm going to use which one is it? That's like uh, the little one over there. And I'm gonna put it on the bottom right here so that way the ball joint has a place to go through just like, you know, um, just like when I replaced the other one. And uh, so I'm gonna press this one out and I'm gonna get to working on pressing it into the, uh, to the knuckle on the car. And just to point out real quick, you can see that all of these, like this one's too big to fit on that lip. This one's too small because it won't fit around the boot. And then, you know, I've got a couple other ones like this one right here. This one is also too small. You can see that I can't get it. I'm not gonna be able to fit it around there and I don't wanna rip this boot by putting this, by trying to do it with this method. So what I'm gonna do is just flip this upside down like I said and then press it on from here. One thing I wanted to point out is to make sure you put all the cotter pins back in place. So if your cotter pins are not back in place, if this comes loose, your suspension can come apart. All right, repeat the process to put everything back together for both sides. Torque everything down to 80 foot-pounds. That's the number I chose. You can do your own research if you want. And um, you're ready to get back on the road. Alright, 
so this is pretty much all the tools I used in the video. I've got a 17 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter, some of these adapters, just the ones that I chose to, uh, to do the job. Um, the C-clamp here, I got my Makita gun. I would strongly recommend getting a gun like this if you're going to do a job. There's cheaper ones out there. You can get like a Milwaukee one or, uh, or Dewalt or whatever and you can get a cheaper gun and it'll make your life a lot easier. I don't think you can even uh, press in and out these bushings without having some type of an impact. Um, I used a flashlight, I got a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of snap ring pliers, the torque wrench, everything that I torqued down was down to 80 foot pounds. And um, this little puller right here, that was just to take the cones off of the old ball joints. And uh, that's pretty much it. I got a 21 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter, a 19 millimeter, and a 22 millimeter and uh, a flathead a screwdriver that was just to um, push back the boots from the old uh, ball joint so I could fit the pullers on it. This is the ball joint that I got. Um, I would strongly recommend getting this one. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. The lip on the ball joint is, uh, is a lot better and it makes it so you can use this coupling instead of trying to put pressure on the actual top uh, threaded portion of the ball joint. So this is the uh, ball joint here. That's the little part number. And uh, this is the one that I found easier to replace. And I got this at O'Reilly for right about $44 after taxes and everything. Just to give you guys a rough idea, this is the ball joint kit that I got. And um, it has a lot of pieces in it and it costs about $150 to rent. But after you bring it back, you get your $150 back. All right, so I just took the car for a ride. The alignment feels good. I don't have any problems with alignment or anything, but the problem that I'm having is while I had the car up in the air and I was looking at everything and I replaced those ball joints, is I found out that the compression arm, the bushing on the end of the compression arm that actually goes to the chassis of the car, and uh, that bushing is bad. So I'm going to probably be replacing that bushing now, today, possibly today, and uh, or I might order new bushings like brand new ones today and then and then uh, replace them maybe um, within a couple of days so yeah that compression arm bushing is bad so I'm gonna be replacing that one I might replace both while I have them both uh, you know down off the car and while I have that brace down off the car so I'm going to uh, probably be doing that within the next couple of days and uh, stay tuned thanks for watching if this video helped you out at all um, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. It makes me feel better about making these videos and consider subscribing I've got a lot of stuff to come and I do videos like this all the time I've had a lot of these 350 Z's so I'm doing you know I'm doing videos on replacing stuff and fixing items all the time on these cars So if you want to subscribe hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video